Getting nostalgic every once in a while, I'd think back at my school days, thinking of my friends who were much taller than I was, they were basketball players actually, thinking that I would eventually catch up in height. I was hoping, I was wondering, but thanks to my mom's height, yeah, that was never gonna happen. I never thought it would be an issue in my personal life, and really it isn't, until Earl decided to have fun with me today. He decided let's have some fun and send Kako back to high school where he would feel, you know, appreciated. Jerk. Here we are again, stuck between two mammoths. Fantastic. This is the Toyota Hi A Super Grandia Elite, and this is the Grandia Tour. Massive! As you may have well noticed, as obvious as the features on your face, the vans do now have noses. Like a bottlenose dolphin. Not necessarily as cute, some people like it, some people don't. But at the very least, now that the engine sits kind of up front and not underneath the driver and the passenger, which prevents you from crotch pot cooking. Ooh, not nice, not nice. Now on the tour, you've got halogen reflector headlamps, halogen fog lamps, LED DRLs, and a huge front grille. Overall, its face looks like something that came out of Minecraft. You see it, right? <laughs> now the Super Grandi on the other hand, it looks like they took that thing and turned this into a Robocop. Look at it, it's like a cyborg, right? And to be honest, I like it. You get icy blue LED headlamps, fog lamps, and DRLs, and a stunner of a chrome grille. Smile, sweetie. Toyota did some work on this front end, and it doesn't look bad at all. Now up front and underneath, both Grandias are similar in the sense that they both have 2.8 liter diesels made it to a six-speed automatic transmission, but the Super Grandia is up on power. It's got 174 horses and 450 newton meters of torque. While the Tourer is down by a little bit, this guy only has 163 horses and 420 newton meters of torque. Fuel economy wise, inside the hellish traffic of Metro Manila, they're actually pretty much the same. Both cars get about five kilometers to the liter. Nothing spectacular, but what do you expect? It is a big engine. On the highway, however, much, much better, as the Tourer gets roughly about 12.5 kilometers per liter, while this guy gets 14. The total height of the Tourer is almost that of Yao Ming. Its length is almost 20 feet long. This thing is so huge, in fact, that it has two mirrors on the side. You've got one main and one tiny one here, just for good measure. On the side, you'll notice that there is only one particular window, which is kind of tiny. I don't even know if I'll fit through that, but I know Earl will. You've got also one on the other side. There is no door on this side. There's only a door on the other side. The tires are 235 65s on 16s, and you're looking at 185 millimeters of ground clearance. There is just one other thing. It's, although it's quite literally plain, but there is one thing that I wanted to point out, and that is I never thought I'd see something this big to cover up a fuel cap. Look at the size of this thing. It's like a Papa Smurf's door. Look at that. It's huge. Actually not Papa Smurf, I could fit in there. Sad but true. Now the Super Grandia, like its front clip, has a little bit more chrome down the sides. For instance, on the side mirror, on the door handles, and found down below. The side mirror, just like the other side, has got repeaters as well. Now, unlike the Tour, which has small little windows, unfortunately, there are no windows on the Super Grandia, so it's aircon or bust. But that's not really a problem because, well, at the very least, if you need to escape, there are two doors on either side. The difference, too, is that that may have 185 millimeters of ground clearance. This guy is down to 175 millimeters of ground clearance, but at the very least, the wheels are nicer and bigger at 17 inches. Ooh, pretty. Now, the rears of these cars are really nothing special. They're square, they're flat. Man, I wish my stomach was that flat. Unfortunately, it's not. So really, yeah, nothing great. But there are differences between the two. For example, the Super Grandia, it's got LED lights in the shape of an L. That's actually very nice. Over here, a bit plain, looks more like bricks. There are qualms though about the rear that I have to mention. Number one is the amount of space that you have when you open them up. Really, it's not a cargo mover, but rather a people mover. So the space ain't nothing much. Second is when you close these guys, ah, 
It's not the easiest thing on the planet. Granted that it doesn't have a power tailgate, sure, but it's weird. On the Super Grandia, it actually has a soft close. So, and then voila, it closes by itself. Now I'm thinking, why didn't they just simply put a power door on this guy? Now, while it's obvious that the Tourer is not as plush as the Super Grandia, it still does have its advantages. Like for example, the headroom, much, much, much higher than it is of the Super Grandia. And that makes getting in and out of the car, especially for senior citizens, a heck of a lot easier. The second is that you can carry 14 passengers in total. Now, I know what you're thinking, yeah, but are they gonna be really, really tight inside the car? No, not really. The chairs are very evenly positioned so that everybody has the equal amount of legroom, which is actually very nice. And the seats, although bent, well, it has a little patch, a little square just for your butt and a little bit of uh, material to make sure that you don't jiggle around inside the cabin. So that's actually a nice thing. Ay, wala palang pintuan dito. And just like the Super Grandia, it gives most passengers charging points for the rear, and all of them are 2.1 amperes. Now, sitting in the tour, I gotta say, it is less truck-like than the previous generation High Ace. It feels more like a proper car, really. You're no longer sitting on the engine, as I mentioned, which means it helps keeping your butt cool instead of warm. You still have an elevated view of the road, which is nice. You've got so many buttons on the steering wheel, almost as much, however, as there are empty buttons around the cabin. You've got touchscreen infotainment system of Toyota here. You've got manual air, and I gotta mention, it's not as snazzy as the Super Gandia, but I actually like it because it's matte and it's not shiny. It just feels like it's much easier to clean and easier to keep too. Sitting in the rear of the Super Grandia is really where you want to be because you earn these seats. You deserve these seats. You paid for these seats, so you might as well enjoy. Sure, driving it is a lot of fun, but really, this is where the party's at. If these chairs look familiar, it's simply because they are, because they've been lifted from the Alphard itself. Check it out. Cup holders on the center armrest, same thing. And electronic futons that come up. Now, the configuration of this car is good for 10 people. I say that lightly because six people are gonna be sitting comfortably while the last four, yeah, not so nice. Gonna be like sardines in a camp. But at the very least, for the four people here inside the main cabin, captain's chairs with cup holders all around, tray tables even, lots of leg room, lots of charging points found all around. I've seen four so far and they're all 2.1 amperes, which in total could jumpstart a Tesla or maybe Elon Musk's dancing style, whatever, however it is that you look at it. Unlike the Alphard, however, there is no sunroof here, but like the Alphard, there is mood lightning all around. You've got your controls up front, wood paneling found also all around, and really it's just, oh yeah, I gotta say, privacy screens too can be found back here. So really, all in all, it's a very nice package, and uh, one I'm looking forward to enjoying on the way home after lunch, because Jack's driving. Sucker! Now you step inside the Super Grandia and it's almost the same deal, but obviously it's much more plush. You've got wood and leather on your steering wheel, much more buttons, less empty buttons at the same time, and you've got wood panels found all around. The infotainment system is still the same. You've got automatic climate, however, on this side, and this compartment size has changed, but not the size of the door. Look at the size of this thing. This thing rivals the door of POTUS's beast. Hey Trump, you in there? China. Now what's great about the Super Grandia is that it's got power seats, which is great for the driver. Unfortunately, on both models, the reverse camera, in contrast to how big the car is, isn't the biggest thing on the planet. And that really is something that Toyota does need to work on. The Grandia Tourer comes equipped with dual front airbags, ABS with EBD and brake assist, hill start assist, a backup camera, plus front and rear parking sensors. Meanwhile, the Super Grandia features Toyota Safety Sense 2, which features a pre-collision system, late departure alert, adaptive cruise control, and automatic high beam. Other equipment include dual front, driver knee, side, and curtain airbags, ABS with EBD and brake assist, hill start assist, vehicle stability control, a backup camera with front and rear parking sensors, and of course, Isofix anchors. <music> Drive 
driving the Tourer is quite exactly like driving the Super Grandia. It's just obviously you have more plushness inside this car. The steering is a little bit on the heavy side and uh, you sit quite tall, which is actually a good thing for a person like me. Visibility is excellent. Uh, power delivery is actually pretty good. The torque is actually very, very strong. It's enough to pull its own weight and 10 more passengers if need be. Why you would drive a van fast, I really have no idea. I'm just saying that if it need be, you can. <laughs> that's well and good when you're driving a van but really this is not where you want to be it's the back where you really want to be because that's where all the fun is so uh, Facundo take over would you please now while riding inside the tour is more like riding in a bus because of its leaf spring riding inside the uh, Super Grandia is uh, much more pleasant because of the coil springs coupled with the captain's chairs this thing is a recipe for a very very comfortable ride now it's not Alphard like but the experience is much better than that of the tour and much much better than that of its predecessors and really falling asleep on this guy is not gonna be a problem at all oh my goodness take me home uh, what Oh crap! Yeah, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Now, people will argue that these two cars are actually quite similar when you can also say that they are actually quite dissimilar in the sense that number one, the pricing. The Tourer comes in at 2,304,000 Philippine pesos, while the Super Grandia comes in at 2,998,000 Philippine pesos. So is to the buyer, quite different. One might be buying it for the business, the other one could be the business person. Luckily for Toyota, they've got all your concerns wrapped up under one roof. Thank you.